Now hear this. Now hear this. Welcome to the Red Oak Victory's new video series entitled, Now Hear This. We're going to be presenting more videos over the next few weeks and months, and if you'd like to be one of the first to uh, see these videos when they come out, click the subscribe button down below. And of course, if you like the videos, click the thumbs up button for us. My name is Fred Clank, and I'm the Director of Marketing for the ship. I'm also a member of the Living History World War II group that is based on the Red Oak Victory, and members of our group will be doing the presentations of these videos. Today's video is going to start about as low down in the ship as you can go without getting your feet wet. We're going to go down to the lower engine room, and from there, we're going to enter the shaft alley. We're going to walk the entire length of the shaft alley, and we'll talk about some of the technology involved in the engine all the way down to the end where the prop is mounted. And then we're going to go up the escape hatch and come out on the main deck. So if you're ready, let's get started. Welcome to the lower engine room of the Red Oak Victory. To give you an orientation, the burners are back over my right shoulder, the boilers above that, and in front of me are the turbines and the reduction gear, and that's what we're going to be talking about today. I'm standing now underneath the high pressure turbine, and you see Petty Officer Fornbacher is up there working on the engines. John, what's the uh, output speed of the shaft from the uh, high pressure turbine if we're cruising at say 15 knots? At 15 knots, the high pressure turbine would be 5400 RPM and the low pressure turbine will be 3900 RPM together for 6000 horsepower. Okay. The propeller won't run at that high an RPM underwater though. It runs at about 100 RPMs. So there's a reduction gear here to reduce the RPMs down to what the shaft needs to run the propeller. So it's kind of like the transmission in your car. Exactly. Okay. All right. Well, let's go look at the propeller shaft. Here we are behind the reduction gear. This is the aft end of the reduction gear, and you can see the propeller shaft coming out of the gear and going into shaft alley. The propeller shaft itself is 175 feet long, and it's made in seven separate segments. Interestingly, it has an odometer, which tells us how many revolutions the propeller shaft has undergone over the lifetime of the ship. Remember, the ship was built in 1944 and served until 1969. So it says 405,767 revolutions. Some of the bearings on the propeller shaft are made of a wood, believe it or not, called lignum vitae. And lignum vitae is an oily wood and it's self-lubricating, and that's why it's a good material for bearings. There's a historical connection with maritime history for lignum vitae. That is John Harrison, who invented the first ocean-going chronometer, also prior to that built clocks entirely of wood using lignum vitae, and its self-lubricating properties allowed those clocks to continue to operate for literally hundreds of years from the time that he built them in the 1700s up until the present day. This structure is called a thrust bearing, and the thrust bearing is designed to take the force of the prop pushing the ship forward and direct that force into the hull of the ship. If we didn't have thrust bearings, all of that force from the propeller would be directed into 
the gears of the reduction gear assembly. And that would shorten the lifetime of those gears and also reduce the efficiency of the, uh, of the reduction gear. The uh, thrust bearings, there are seven of these throughout the length of the propeller shaft. emergency escape, which is this long ladder uh, heading up to the upper deck. And you climb it one step at a time this way. Now I suspect if we were taking water, Seaman Gay would be moving a little bit faster than he is right now. But what we're going to do is run up to the main deck and meet him when he emerges from the escape trunk. Thank you for listening today. If you have any questions or any comments, use the comments section below. We'll do our best to respond to them. If you'd like to see more videos like this about the Red Oak Victory, subscribe to our YouTube channel.